Welcome back to our little mini series about creating our downstairs toilet and utility room. Today we're going to be talking about all sorts of things including problematic paint and how to deal with issues such as paint flating off the wall and I'll also explain why we're using at least four maybe five different types of paint on this project. Hiya folks, welcome back to the show and you're joining us at the point where we're nearly done with the downstairs toilet part and things have all started to get a little bit hectic because I've just had a phone call to say the building inspector is coming tomorrow to do the final sign off on the extension and everything which means that even though the floor is not down we're going to have to temporarily hook the toilet up so that that's all kind of done and ready to sign off. Obviously all of this is done but we're far from finished with the whole project so really the only technical element yet to do as I say is to literally just plumb the toilet in but do expect the timelines to be chopping and changing all over the place because the final fit of the toilet won't happen until we've got the floors down I haven't got time to fit the floors before the building inspector comes so uh, let's rewind a little bit and talk about problematic paint so I'm no plasterer but I've done all of the like jointing and taping it's as good as it gets it feels pretty smooth to be honest but oh man it's such a fanny on like having to like do took like three days in between like coats to do that uh, but I can't plaster so I can't do like a proper wet plaster skim but anyway it's done it's fine and uh, I think once it's all painted and stuff it's gonna look awesome boxed in all around the bottom there I've had to do some pretty heavy sanding on this wall to try and make it vaguely flat but yeah okay it is what it is it'll be fine but one thing I wanted to very quickly show you Mrs Mark has started the decorating now because we're, we're pretty much we we'll want to get all the decorating done before we put the floor down and uh, yeah, this wall here has been a bit of a comedy of errors. Well, and, and to be honest, the whole room's been a bit of a comedy of errors. But way back when we first started the renovation work in this house, we got this room completely replastered because we knew we'd have to put the boiler on the wall at some point, and it made sense to get the room replastered before putting the boiler on the wall. And this wall here and this back wall, I think, had this weird kind of glossy yellowy kind of paint on it and uh, we said to the plasterers can you plaster over that or do you want us to knock all the plaster off down to the brick because this is a brick wall that's a brick wall and they said no no it's fine we can plaster over it they PVA'd it and they just put a skim coat straight over and yeah <laughs> it's not taken well at all the whole wall's like full of cracks and, and stuff and yeah it's like I don't know if you can hear that at all but the plaster's not attached to the wall it hasn't taken to that yellowy glossy paint so folks any plasterers out there let us know what you would have done I know there's a lot of people who think PVA fixes everything but it, it really doesn't this entire skim is loose it's not attached to the wall and then it just gets better and better this so we oh well, I'm saying the royal we Mrs Mark miscoated the entire house and the first paint that we ended up using to do the miscoat was just I can't remember it was either Wick's own brand or it was Crown but it was like a contract matte white paint that you'd normally use you know to thin it down a bit use it as a miscoat jobs are good but Honestly, it's the chalkiest paint I have ever seen. I mean, look at this. So bear in mind, this is like, a, what? Well over a year since this was painted, you know? There you go. How was that? And it was miscoated as per the instructions, but basically that cannot take paint. And we had problems. We used it to miscoat the bathroom upstairs as well. And as a result, all the paint started peeling off the bathroom walls, the top coat paint. It just didn't stick to it because it's, it's like powder. I mean, that you can't use that. So that means that this room is getting a treatment of a whole load of different types of paint to try and fix all these problems. And what Mrs. Mark is using on these walls is peel stop. And we found this actually really, you know, with some products that... Uh, 
you think, oh, it's a bit of a gimmick, but uh, this genuinely does seem to work. And it seems to kind of penetrate through, and even if you've got like flaky paint, it kind of re-glues the, fl the flaky paint back onto the wall. I can't say for definite it's going to fix every kind of problem that you're going to run into. This isn't sponsored, but we have genuinely had good experiences with this. So we'll peel stop all of these walls that have the uh, flaky, well, that have the powdery paint on them. So that's that wall and that wall. This wall that we've taped and jointed is going to get good old screw fix bare plaster primer. That's about the best bare plaster primer that we've found. The ceiling we actually painted with uh, acrylic primer undercoat and that adhered and again it was that weird glossy paint on the ceiling as well and the acrylic primer undercoat adhered to that really really well. So as a result, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> So this stuff, this is our kind of primer of choice. If we'd known that the plaster wasn't going to stick on that wall, I bet if we'd painted it with this first, it would have stuck to that wall. But hey, you know, we were just kind of following what the plaster has said that they could get away with. And unfortunately, obviously, they've taken a bit of a punt on it and it didn't work. And what we could do is literally scrape all of this loose plaster off the wall but almost this entire wall is going to be covered in shelves, coat hooks and all that sort of thing. So we're kind of hoping that once all the shelf rails are up and everything, that will kind of just hold the plaster on the wall. Because I really don't want to be scraping all that plaster off. That's going to create like a, a massive job that we don't really need. One thing I did try doing up the top there, sorry, camera's probably struggling to focus on white walls. But what I did try was I knocked a bit of plaster off and then... I kind of poured PVA down the back and I tried to stick the plaster back on. It did kind of work, like here, where the PVA has run down the back of the plaster, it feels a bit more solid, it doesn't feel like it's loose, whereas over here, like if I tap the wall here where I've poured the PVA behind it, whereas here, where I haven't poured the PVA behind it, it's just not attached. <laughs> There's a gap between the plaster and the wall. What can you do without like taking... It needs to be something thin enough that it drips down the back of the plaster. So it's either that or you scrape all the plaster off and start again. But I really didn't want to do it. They yeah, they definitely use PVA. But, uh, but I think it was either maybe they've just diluted the PVA too much. What they should have done is... Um, either used a proper primer, like SBR or something like that, or may, I don't know, maybe even SBR would, as far as I know, SBR like sticks to glass and everything. So <laughs> I don't think you'd have any problems with that. Or um, just scratch the wall first and uh, that would have probably helped the PVA bond to the wall, but it's just because the paint was so glossy. But if the wall was scratched a bit, I think that would have sorted it out. Anyway, so fingers crossed, by the time we come to put the shelves on this, you see the, the gamble is the vibration of the SDS drill into this wall might shake all the plaster off the wall. And we're trying to do all the decorating first, so <laughs> it could be that we decorate it all. Sorry, Royal Boy again. Mrs. Mac decorates it all. And then I come to put the shelves up and completely destroy it. They'll know if that's happened. There'll be no more videos, you'll be dead. <laughs> anyway, so peel stop on that wall and then we can do top coats. Bare plaster primer on that wall, then we can do top coats. Acrylic primer undercoat on the ceiling has already been done, so that is ready for just bog standard emulsion. There's various bits of boxing that I've made this removable, so it, it's going to have to come off and go back on and stuff. But anyway, boxing will be uh, acrylic primer undercoat and then top coats. All the woodwork will be acrylic primer undercoat and then we're just going to use a water-based satin that we normally use. That works really well, by the way. So in other words, this stuff, fast drying satin, we've used that on all of the woodwork in the house and it's taken really well. Very, very hard wearing. I'm quite impressed with that. So yeah, thumbs up for the fast drying satin. Any other types of paint in here? I can't think. Four, five different types of paint that we're using. But yeah, it's all in the prep and hopefully we can kind of repair problems that have happened earlier on in the job 
by using the correct kind of repair products now. And uh, yeah, it's one of those things. But I thought that might be useful for you. Lots of different types of pain. So folks, we are jumping about all over the place in the timeline at the minute and the exciting news is, a month or so down the line, Building Inspector's been, everything's great, no problems whatsoever. But if you remember, we didn't have time to lay the floor before the Building Inspector came out. So we had to kind of temporarily hook everything up and then remove it all to get the floor underneath the toilet and now we're going to fit everything kind of into its final position. I just wanted to make sure the toilet was actually vaguely functional at the point the building inspector came out. Anyway, I'll show you what I'm doing here for the final fix of everything. Basically what I've done, I don't know if you can see, there's a very very faint line on the wall coming up here, it's hard to say grey on green, but that is perfectly plumb to the centre of the outlet down at floor level that you've probably just seen us cut out like a couple of months ago. And I've also marked a centre mark on the toilet itself. So that centre mark of the toilet is in line with that. So we know that the toilet is perfectly in line with the waste pipe at the bottom. It's really hard to align the waste pipe at the bottom of the toilet if you don't have some sort of mark at the top to kind of work off. And then I'm just using, it's a Fisher toilet pan bidet fixing kit thing and essentially what we do is we screw these brackets to the floor and then we screw through the side of the toilet into these brackets. Relatively straightforward he says. So all I'm going to do to save marking our shiny new floor I'm just going to put some masking tape down right next to the loo so I know that that's exactly where the outside of the toilet is and then I'm going to put a little mark on the masking tape in line with the hole so we know that's where the centre of the bracket goes. And then I'll repeat that over on the other side. I'm also going to mark the wall behind the cistern here just through the holes. If you remember we'll put a bit of wood inside this wall to support the cistern. So if you want to see that you can go back to an earlier episode of this series. Don't forget to hit subscribe by the way and you can see the full story of jobs like this from start to finish. But the reason I'm marking these is because I'm just going to pilot hole drill it through just because it can be a little bit tricky getting these in and at least if there's a bit of a starter hole to get it going it'll make life a bit easier when we do the final fix. And then the way this works, this goes kind of on the inside of the toilet, so it goes like that, in line with these little marks that we've put on the floor. But you need to take into account the thickness of the ceramic of the toilet, so it's around, well, we're going to come back about 8 millimetres from the edge of the bowl, so about that, central to the mark that we've put there. And then we're going to bolt these into the floor, it comes supplied with great big bolts, so we're going to 
drill through. This is like an engineered oak that we've got here. So we're not going to fix into the oak itself. We're going to drill quite a big clearance hole so the oak potentially has a little bit of room to move and we'll drill through into the subfloor below. And then we we'll just use these screws here. It'll be difficult to show you once the toilet's in, so I'll explain it. But basically these stainless steel screws go into these little plastic kind of washer lug things through the side of the toilet and they drill into one of these or the screw into one of these uh, millions of holes in the side of the bracket. And then once that's all fixed through, we've got these little caps that go over the top to make it look all nice and pretty. And then the next bit is almost impossible to film because all you'll see is my backside, but I need to move the toilet in, do all the final fix plumbing here because I've had to reconnect something to drain the water out of the system. At the moment we're draining via this basin and the water supply is turned off so this is just whatever's in the pipes. But obviously since this is really low down there's still going to be stuff in the pipes that we can only really drain from this point. The other thing that I'm going to do is this flexi connector, it's easier to connect that to the toilet first and then into the wall but I've just got it here because I had some temporary covering over it to stop smells coming out and things. But you get the general idea. I'll do my best to film it on the GoPro, but you're probably not going to see very much. Just to show you in here as well what I've done, I've used stainless steel coach screws with stainless steel washers. The rubber washers, they're just tap washers, dead easy to get hold of. And I didn't have any plastic inserts just to protect the ceramics, so a little tip for you. I just used a silicon nozzle and cut out a little bit just to stop the metal rubbing on the actual ceramic itself. Now for the minute I've left these loose because what I'm going to do is I'm just checking that everything is all watertight, there's no leaks, there's no problems or anything like that and after a day or so once I'm confident everything is good I'll put a little bead of silicon down the back here and once that silicon has hardened then I'll tighten these a little bit more. Not too much because if I tighten this too much it's going to try and separate the cistern from the toilet itself. Bearing in mind obviously the toilet is now screwed to the floor so the toilet can't move. So if I was to tighten this really tight flush back to the wall this is, by the way, as far back as it'll go. There's something on the back of the toilet hitting the wall, but that's fine. Once there's a bead of silicon down the back here, and then I'll just tighten these up a little bit, it ain't going anywhere. 
On a similar note, I'll also put a bead of silicon, just clear silicon around the bottom edge as well. If you find the toilet is rocking about or anything like that, what you can do is put some little spacers under and just then silicon around them and make sure you can't actually see the spacers, but it can be enough to take any wobble out if the floor is not perfectly even or, as is also not unheard of, if the bottom of the toilet isn't perfectly flat. But yeah, it's all working, all plumbed in. I do need to adjust this toilet seat as well. All good, no leaks, but as I say, I will check in a day or so time, just make sure everything's completely dry. And then, as I say, silicon down the back, tighten those bolts once the silicon's set, little bead of silicon around the bottom. I'm not gonna pretend this was an easy job. It wasn't. It was really quite tricky getting that flexi pipe in at the back. I ended up having to actually clean all of the silicon off the toilet side coupler because it was just far too slippy. It kept on slipping off of its own accord. So I had to clean all that and uh, then start it again. And eventually we got it in. We've kind of repurposed this toilet from what was the upstairs toilet. It's not the sort of toilet I would generally buy because it's really tricky to get access at the back there. As per usual folks, think maintenance, but it's fine. It's working, another job is done. So folks, we are so close to being done now. Next time we're going to take a deep dive into the fire safety side of things. And then it's finally time for the big reveal. In between all that, I've got a special video coming out completely off topic from my usual stuff. I'll not spoil it other than to say I've once again failed in my attempt to make shorter videos. You'll know it when it lands. For now folks, as per usual, be nice to each other, look after each other, and we'll see you next time. Tatty bye.